Would you look at the size of this place? Oh, John, I don't like the looks of this. Not one bit. Oh, jeez, Louise, baby. Now, John, you know I'm not crazy. Professor? Sometimes there are things in science that cannot be explained. I don't like the looks of this. Well, what do you want me to do about it? I'm just an average guy out to make an honest buck. Is that so terrible? I wouldn't just make something like this no. up. No. Oh, definitely Jesus, no. Baby. Definitely no. no. Definitely no. Definitely no. Definitely no. 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 It up. Let me taste a flavor before they go and ban it. and ghouls and welcome to my youtube channel this is mark and i thank you so much for coming by today uh, i hope you like the song you just heard that's something i wrote and recorded a few years back called necromantic i had a lot of fun recording that back then and uh yes those are all my, all my voices including the female voices so it was a little tricky but it was a blast to record and the little video bits that you saw in there that's uh, me and my family and we recorded our our family halloween video uh, based on that song. So that was a real blast too. 
But I did want to get right into this discussion about Inktober. Now, you know, I've been a designer and an illustrator for many years. And for me, every day is Inktober. So, you know, I, I'm drawing constantly. So to have projects or to have assignments like this, it's not really a big deal for me. But I am really excited to jump in and participate in my first Inktober. So this is a real challenge for me, and I'm looking forward to it. However, I know that uh, there's a few videos out there and some blogs that I've read where I've seen people actually discuss that they got stressed last year during Inktober and that there were some problems that they had halfway through or, you know, trying to find their way through it. And that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today and share with you my perspective on, you know, some of the reasons why you might want to avoid doing Inktober or the reasons you shouldn't avoid doing Inktober. So there's, there's a positive and a negative to both sides of it. And uh, I have no affiliation with this event. This is something someone else created. So I'm just chiming in and giving my perspective and my thoughts. And these are only opinions, of course. So uh, let's get right into the discussion. And the first thing I want to talk about is Mr. Jake Parker. This is the guy that created Inktober. And uh, I don't know the full story. I should probably look into it myself and find out exactly why and what prompted him to start this. But I will say one thing. If you don't know who Jake Parker is then you're basically just blindly following this event and not really knowing what it's about or what the history is. So, you know, I think we should all do ourselves a favor if we don't know and go check out Jake's channel and look at his videos and look at his website and his artwork and become familiar with this gentleman. I have already seen his videos and I think this guy is just great. He's got so much information in his uh, on his YouTube channel and he's just really, really helpful and generous, but he's also a businessman, which I can respect and relate to. So Inktober for him is is not only just a fun event, but it's also a great marketing tool to drive viewers to his YouTube channel and, and you know, bring people to his work and, and some of the things that he's doing. So I have huge respect for what he's doing, both work-wise and with Inktober, and I'm a big fan of his, his illustration work. He's got a great style. So I really encourage you to go check out his channel, learn more about this gentleman, and, you know, find out why he's doing October and what uh, Inktober <laughs> and what it means to him. Uh, and that way you can sort of embrace the whole event with, you know, more of a more of a, a knowledge base. I don't know if that's the right way to say that or not, but I think you know what I mean. So that's number one. Number two this has got to do with the expense of Inktober. Now, a lot of people, you know, will, you know, come on YouTube or whatever, and they'll show their art haul for Inktober. They'll show you the new pens or the inks or the new supplies they got. And that can be very tempting to go out and want to spend money on supplies. But I just will say, if you can't afford to buy new supplies for this event, then don't, because it's not necessary. Just be careful, because, you know, the allure of wanting to go out and buy new supplies it's a very strong allure, and uh, all you really need is like a Sharpie and a piece of paper or even just a ballpoint pen, and that's all you really need for this kind of event. And you can just explore your creativity through new styles and new techniques and things you've never done before. So don't get caught too much up in the expense of Inktober, and you know, don't put yourself in a position where you've overspent or you spent money that should have gone to other things. Uh, number three... That is commitment. And like anything, you know, if you, you play a sport or you are even part of like a book club or something, you know, there's a commitment level that you get into. And that can actually be overwhelming, especially when you have to produce. Now, no one anticipates something like a creative block, but they do come, especially when you're trying to force it. So a commitment like this can actually cause some problems for you, especially if you don't feel like you're fulfilling it. So anytime during Inktober, if you're feeling like you're overcommitted or you have work or school or homework or projects, just remember to just take a break, step back from it. This is supposed to be a fun event. And, uh, you know, don't let yourself get overcommitted to it. And that goes into number four, which is the difference between a challenge and fun. You know, you can challenge yourself and try to get through Inktober and try to complete the whole thing or, or however it works, you know, for you. But just remember that the key word to this is fun. It shouldn't be a challenge. It should be fun for you. I know that's how I'm looking at it because I have a lot of things I have on my plate between family and friends and work and all that stuff. And I don't want to feel 
overcommitted, and I don't want this to be a chore. I want this to be fun for me. So that's where I'm sitting with this whole, you know, Inktober challenge. It's it's fun. It's the Inktober fun challenge. And that goes into number five, which is anxiety. You know, if this is causing you stress, then that's going to be a problem because that's some of the stuff I heard from people last year in their videos is, you know, they were stressing out that that Inktober, they weren't able to do the drawing they wanted or they messed something up or, you know, whatever the reasons. It was causing them anxiety and stress, which that should never be the result of something like this. And I'm sure, you know, if, if Mr. Jake Parker were sitting here, he would say the same thing. It should never be stressful. It should be fun. It should be a stress relief, not a stress causer. So if you do feel anxiety from something like this, again, take a break, step back, and remember this is about you and your exploration and your journey through art. So make it yours and have fun with it. And of course that goes into number six, which is pressure. The pressure to reach the deadline, to finish the drawing. You know, you might sketch something out and you might not have time to draw it, and then you feel pressure you know, to dive into it and draw it and complete it. And no one needs that kind of pressure on them, especially if you've got other things going on in your life. So pressure will cause anxiety, which will make it not fun. And then you blow your commitment to it. And oh my gosh, what are you going to do? So, you know, it goes back to uh, the other, you know, number, number four that I mentioned, which is just keeping it fun, keep it lighthearted and enjoy the experience, fully immerse yourself, but yet be willing to step back when you need to. And that goes on to number seven, which is other projects or tasks. Uh, for me, I know if something comes in the way and I have to stop doing this, uh, this event, then I stop doing it. That's as simple as it is. That's rule number one. Having a good perspective on what you need to do and setting realistic expectations of yourself is really important. So something like Inktober, while we all start off with this you know, running stride, after a few exercises, you kind of slow down a little bit and you kind of just, you know, it can be overwhelming. So, you know, if you've got other tasks or other projects or homework or even chores you have to do that for yourself, make sure you prioritize and, and keep things in perspective. Now, number eight is benefits. And there are definitely benefits to this whole event. Some of them may not seem evident right away and you might feel like you're just wasting your time. Why am I doing this? Why? but the benefits are going to greatly outweigh. This is a really fantastic opportunity to explore your own creativity, style, and just, you know, your artistic expression. So I can't really tell you how the benefits are going to work for you, but I just know that the benefits are going to be really great. One thing also, number nine, is try not to compare yourself to other artists. There are going to be a lot of people posting their Inktober results, and it'll be very easy to get caught up in how well other people do, and, you know, you might look at your own stuff and think, you know, it's not as good as what other people are doing. Why am I bothering? But try not to look at other people's stuff. Look at what you're doing and look at the success that you have with Inktober. And I think you'll be so happy when you do, especially when you put it away for a while and you come back to it later. That's the best way to approach this stuff. And number 10, this is the last one, is, you know, Inktober is going to be awesome. And I don't want you to be afraid of the awesome. If the awesome scares you and you can't handle the awesome and how awesome you're going to be if you go through this, then maybe you shouldn't do it. However, if you are awesome, which I know you are, and you create awesome artwork, which I know you do, <laughs> then jump right into this Inktober and have a great time with it because it's going to be awesome. So I wish everyone a happy Inktober and I hope everyone has a positive, just joyous experience exploring their creativity in their art. Because I know for me, this is again, my first time jumping in and I thank, you know, Jake Parker for bringing this to the community and giving people just an opportunity to explore and celebrate drawing and art and all that stuff. So anyhow, thank you so much for your time. I hope this was helpful uh, and I hope you enjoyed watching it. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe below. And if you like the music, head on over to Noise Trade. The uh, link is right here and uh, you can download the music I post for free. And again, thank you so much for your time. God bless.